Welcome to Moringa for Life, how to plant and grow Moringa series. I wanted to do an introduction of the um, following little clips that you're going to see if you continue on with us. Uh, we're here in the Moringa Music Room at Moringa for Life Farm. So not actually out on the land, but I wanted to show you some of the things that you'll see in the other clips. Uh, this is a Moringa seed. We're going to plant that seed and I would like in this series to dispel some of the misinformation out there about how to grow Moringa, especially from the start of the seed. So there's a lot, this is what, you know, this is what the seed hull looks like and there's a lot of little clips out there that show that you have to soak it for 24 hours in a dark room and all sorts of things. Uh, it's very simple, so I want it to be easy for people to grow. I also want to make sure that you don't add steps that could also complicate it or make your Moringa not thrive. So I've been growing Moringa for 14 years and I have made all the mistakes, so you don't have to remake those mistakes. And I'd like to share those uh, successes so that you'll see how to grow Moringa properly and successfully. So then you'll see a clip about growing a seed from seed. And I grow them because I grow so many. I just pierce the outside hull. This is kind of like a, a sunflower seed. It has a, the kernel inside, which is the actual seed. And so you can just pierce that gently and put that in the soil. And you're going to see how to do that in the depth of uh, the soil. But that's all you need. You don't need to have it more complicated than that. Moringa is very easy to grow. I'm in San Diego, so I'm in a growing season that lasts from about June, sometimes mid-June through November, but your season may be shorter. If you're in a tropical zone, you are lucky, it'll be year-round, so you won't have to do some of the things that I have to do to try to extend my season here. We'll also show how to plant a bare root. So Moringa is very hardy at the point that it has this bark, so this is a one-year seedling you'll see on my website a yearling and this is what I mail when people order um, yearlings on my site and this top part once it's about has about this much growth then I know the growing season ha is fully started I cut that top off this gets rinsed off these are the feeder roots and this gets shipped just in a moist um, paper inside of a Ziploc bag with instructions. Moringa can actually stay in this state outside of the ground for multiple years. I've done an experiment that lasted six years where I just had multiple bare roots just laying in a tray out in this, the elements and every year I would plant a few and every year they grew. So that tells me that the life force in this bare root from the time that it has that bark is very hardy and is going to survive a lot of time and a lot of elements, different elements. I'm also going to show how to do a cutting. So this is a harvest that we did. We have quite substantial trees so this is a stalk that the leaf has been taken and harvested. And this dimension is a size that will be very successful. I usually use the dimension of the width of my finger. Um, I have done some and you'll see in following clips where the dimension is narrower and the, it is growing but it did take some time to get that growth and it is also in a greenhouse not just out in cold weather that Moringa still wants that tropical weather so I'm doing a lot it takes a lot to create that climate in San Diego and wherever you are it might be even more of a challenge I also plant by the lunar calendar so the, you can find the planting days um, if you go to farmersalmanac.com and look up uh, planting by the moon, the, or I think it's called planting by the moon. And those planting days I use are days for above ground, transplanting, and root. So on any of those days I use for planting Moringa. So wherever you are, those will be planting days for you too. I also will go over um, planting the bare root and the reason for doing it is that you get multiple stalks coming out, which means more leaf production. And that's what we were looking for because not all the zones have enough heat for um, creating the seed pod. I focus on leaf production and so the more you cut Moringa down, um, the more sprouts will come and the more leaf production you'll have. 
So those are the clips that are, are coming. I hope you stay tuned for all of them. I'll also be going over um, harvesting and all the different parts to try to make as many people successful at growing moringa as possible. There are a lot of websites out there doing a lot of um, different things that, you know, I know they're doing their best but sometimes they just need some information, so I'm hoping that they'll also look at these clips to see how to improve their production, to improve the quality of Moringa. I really am concerned that we maintain a high level of Moringa for all, all the Moringa that's being grown. Some people are using it for their very sensitive health, so it's very important that we're all using the correct information and growing Moringa so that it's thriving, harvesting it, so that it's at its highest best, because Moringa offers so much for healing and feeding our world. Thank you.